Hello, uh, I'm Catherine Murphy, and I currently work for Lincolnshire County Council as their Historic Environment Records Assistant. Um, but today I'll be talking to you about some ind an independent research project that I've been doing in my spare time on the gas bridge in Scotland, so quite far from Lincolnshire. Um, so I'm just going to go over a brief introduction to the project and what the gas bridge uh, system actually is, and then go over the viewshed methods that I applied, so cumulative, regular cumulative and fuzzy viewsheds. Um, and then discuss kind of what I found. Um, and I was actually quite lucky this summer to be able to fly over the gas bridge in a small plane and take photographs of the surrounding landscape so, and the earthwork sites that actually survive. So in this photo, you can see the gas bridge running along, um, sort of off into the distance on the left-hand side of the image. So some of these photos will show up um, throughout the presentation as well. So as you may know, the Roman army um, under the command of Emperor Claudius uh, invaded Britannia in AD 43 and then began expanding across the island for several decades, building from roads, forts, and other infrastructure um, as was needed. So this expanding force reached northern England and what's now Scotland in the early AD 70s, less than 40 years after the initial conquest. So one part of this invasion of Scotland was the construction of a series of towers, forts, and fortlets along a road in the lowlands between the Forth Clyde Valley and the Tay River. So from about north, north of Glasgow, north of the Antonine Wall Line, um, up to Perth, which is where um, there'll be mapped on the next um, slide, you can see it's a little bit more clearly. Um, so this line follows the Gas Bridge, which is a natural um, ridge of high ground in the landscape, and is known as the Gas System. And it's thought to be the earliest known example of a Roman frontier in the entire empire. So based on recent research into the development of the Gas, the Roman line is thought to date from the early 80s, until AD 87. Um, there are also a couple other, of other lines of Roman infrastructure in the region, and these are the Highland Line and the Strathmore Line, and I'll go into more detail in a moment. Um, I've been interested in the gas bridge um, for a number of years and began the initial stages of this project during my master's degree. Um, but at this point, I wanted to look at how the three lines, the gas, the Strathmore, and the Highland Line, um, interacted, what visibility existed from the various military installations in the area, but particularly from the towers, and see what the GIS analysis might tell us about the purpose of the gas line, whether it's truly a uh, frontier designed to monitor for inv invading forces, or if it's designed to monitor along the roadway, perhaps to um, protect the movement of goods, um, or if it's designed to monitor the arable land to the south and east of the line. So unlike later frontiers, uh, the gas bridge doesn't have the running linear, linear fortifications that you see on Hadrian's Wall, the Antonine Wall, or the German Limes. Despite this, the, the line of towers, forts, and fortlets would have been a very imposing presence in the landscape and in the area, and would send a clear message to locals that they were being watched and that they were in controlled territory. The main gas bridge line, which is shown in yellow on the map, um, is uh, made up of 18 known towers, with a few other potential um, locations for other towers um, suggested based on spacing. And there are also three um, small forts and three fortlets. The tower sites show evidence for multiple phases of construction, as a number of the sites have had one or more of the large support posts replaced during occupation. Uh, and to this, the southern portion of the line, the sites have double-ditched enclosures, while in the northern portion, they have single-ditched enclosures. So there's sort of different construction methods have been used um, across along the line. The entrances to all of these enclosures face the line, so whether they sit north or south of the road, um, which is marked in orange, um, will depend on where that is, but they all face towards that, that road. Um, and some of the, small, the sites have small tracks that then lead from the road to the, the enclosure. The Highland Line, are also, is, they're also known as the Glen Blocker Forts, are shown in red. And these are found at the entrance to various, um, uh, uh, shown at the entrance to various glens along the edge of the Highlands. The, the line consists of five full-sized auxiliary forts and the only legionary fortress in Scotland, which is uh, Inch to Hill. And the final line that I'm going to talk about today is the Strathmore line, which, is, which may be a continuation of the Gas Bridge line, and it's shown in orange in the top right of the, the map. Um, at the moment, known sites include two towers, two fortlets, and three auxiliary forts, and the line of the Roman road in this area is speculative as it hasn't been completely traced um, north of Bertha. So the towers, fortlets, and forts are all constructed out of timber, with earthwork bank and ditch surrounds, and there's very little dating evidence from the infrastructure along the gas bridge. The forts provide a little bit more evidence, there's more occupation there, but the, the other sites are not um, as rich in, in finds. 
So most of the sites have been systematically excavated over the last several decades, but this has turned up only a handful of shards of pottery, and those that have been able to be dated are from the Flavian period. And the end date for occupation has been quite firmly set at um, AD 87 based on coinage finds and the abandonment of Inchitil Fortress. And evidence at the majority of the sites indicates that timber structures were uh, systematically demolished and then burnt prior to abandonment. And then there is some evidence for reoccupation of the forts and fortlets during the Antonine period. So viewshed analysis allows archaeologists to understand the visibility of, from, and between sites and to study the placement of sites in the landscape. So one of the most commonly used methods is just a regular viewshed. So it's a simple method that uses elevation provided by a digital elevation model to determine what cells in the di digital landscape are visible. Elevation is the only variable taken into consideration when doing this calculation, and so the output, output of your viewshed is going to be binary. A cell or a point in the landscape is either visible or not visible. For this study, the regular view sheds were run for every site in the Gask, Highland, and Strathmore lines at two offset heights, so 8.7 and 11.7 meters. So this is the height of a tower, um, which is suggested at between seven and 10 meters based on post size and placement, um, plus the height of an observer. Uh, these heights have been used throughout the study, and on the following maps, the large colored area is the visible area, and blues for the gas ridge, green for the Highland line, and purple for the Strathmore line. For the Gas Bridge, the 18 towers have extensive visibility both north and south of the Roman road. The road is in view for the entire length of the line, and the Strathmore Towers are within the visible area. The visibility from the three fortlets covers almost the exact same area as that of the towers, and this might indicate that the towers were replaced by the fortlets during occupation, and there is evidence, there's towers that are found in the same or very close proximity to tower sites. Um, and so this way they could have monitored the area with less manpower. At the moment, there is a gap in the visibility between the fortlets and the northern portion of the gas ridge, which could indicate that there's another fortlet site to be found in that area. And the gas ridge forts have viewsheds that cover a large area, um, but there's no over overlap or intervisibility between those sites. Bertha and Ardoch um, look primarily to the south and the east, while Strugith looks has good visibility to the north. And um, despite all of this extensive um, visible, visible area from the towers and forts and fortlets from the gas bridge. There's no intervisibility with the Highland forts or with Inchita Hill Fortress. Inchita Hill has good visibility with the surrounding landscape with an approximately <coughs> an approximate five kilometer radius, and it does connect with the Strathmore Line towers. Other than that connection, the fortress um, is sort of blind to the rest of the infrastructure in the area. And the Highland Line forts have quite localized view sheds and are only really able to monitor the area directly around the fort. The Strathmore forts and fortlets have poor visibility, um, they are able to see a small, sport, uh, small portion of the surrounding landscape, but are not intervisible with the majority um, of other sites included in the study. The Strathmore Towers, in comparison, comparison have good visibility, um, and they are intervisible with all the other Strathmore installations, as well as Inchita Hill, Fendock Fort, and several of the other tower sites along the Gas Ridge. Um, a second simple method is the cumulative view shed. So this is created by using map algebra to add the regular view sheds together, uh, creating a cumulative overview of visibility from those observer points. This method can highlight areas that are most and least visible in your landscape, and as well as indicating how many times uh, each tower fort or fortlet site is seen by other infrastructure in the area. As this is uh, the basis for this method is the regular view sheds, the only variable uh, taken into consideration to determine visibility is elevation. Cumulative view sheds were created for each separate site type and for each, highland, um, as each line as a whole as well, at both offset heights. And the darker the color on the map, the more times the area is seen by the observer points. For the gas bridge sites, the areas of the surrounding landscape are visible by up to 20 other sites. Uh, the most visible portion of the landscape is around the central and southern portion of the line, with less overlap and visible areas to the north, in the northern portion of the line. Um, but a large por portion of the visible landscape um, has excellent coverage and is seen by multiple sites. As seen earlier, the Highland Line has very little overlap, and the majority of the visible areas are only seen by one site. The area with the most overlap, um, where the landscape is visible by up to four sites, is in an area some distance away from the line of forts, so it's not necessarily super useful to be able to see that area. Uh, the Strathmore Line has excellent coverage of the landscape around its installations and Inchita Hill, where areas are seen by up to seven times, and there's, but there's little overlap with the Gas Ridge, as um, these are only visible by the Strathmore Tower sites. 
The final method that I've used in the study is, is fuzzy leaf sheds. So this is a more robust method. It takes into account multiple uh, variables when creating the viewshed output. By incorporating a distance k calculation when running the analysis, this method accounts for the limitations of human vision over distance, uh, the effects of atmospheric haze and light distortion, as well as elevation. To run this analysis, you must set um, an area of perfect visibility around the observer points and a maximum distance beyond which there is no visibility with a decrease um, in visibility between those two values. Uh, the output is, is uh, a gradient and between zero and one uh, with values at or close to one uh, being the most visible and values decrease as you move away from the observer point and uh, becoming less visible as you reach zero. This provides a more realistic output of what is visible from the Roman infrastructure along the gas bridge and, and the other lines in the region. A fuzzy viewshed was created for each type of installa installation along each line uh, at both offset heights once again. And so for this study, the maximum visible distance was set to 20 kilometers and interim distances were set at one third intervals. The area of perfect visibility is in this calculation extends to 6.6 .6 kilometers. Visibility then begins to diminish up to 13.3 kilometers and is, is greatly diminished up to 20 kilometers beyond which there's no visibility from the observer points. So on the maps, again, the darker the color, the higher the visibility value. The visibility, visibility values are generally quite high for all installations in the gas region. The grass ridge towers are shown in blue and the majority of the landscape that is visible from the towers falls into that area of perfect visibility, indicating that the visibility from the gas ridge line is excellent. The, closer, um, the closest sites um, on the Highland and Strathmore lines, they're still not intervisible, um, but they do fall into that, they fall into the area where they would be visible to the tower, but there there's, isn't intervisibility. Um, and the majority of the sites in the study fall outside of the area um, of visibility for the gas bridge. Um, visibility only really begins to decrease when you reach the highlands to the north and areas of high ground to the south when looking out from the gas bridge. As noted earlier, most of the highland line forts have quite localized view sheds, and most of what is visible from the forts is within the area of perfect visibility shown in dark green. The same is true for Hill Fortress, um, so even though these Roman installations cannot see exceptionally far, what is within view is seen quite well. And the Strathmore Towers were able to see much more than the forts or fortlets in this line. Insta Hill falls within the perf area of perfect visibility shown in dark purple and would have benefited from the Strathmore Towers ability to see further afield. Several towers on the gas bridge line fall within visible areas, but are on the edge of the diminishing visibility or fall well into the greatly diminished area of visibility. So this means they would be able to see each other, um, but it would not be a as clear as the view between Insta Hill and Stra the Strathmore Towers. And if more sites are found north of Bertha, then this link between the Strathmore line and the gas bridge could be improved. So based on the analysis that I've conducted for this study, it's quite clear that the gas bridge line and the Highland line forts are not intervisible. This suggests that they are not an integrated system and may not have been designed to work together. And the purpose of these two lines could be quite different. Um, the visibility from the Highland line forts is generally very small and localized, and it could mean that these sites act as sort of local um, points where locals traveling down the glens could trade or they were taxed for goods and uh, as they entered into Roman controlled to territory to the south. Insta Hill has excellent visibility in its immediate, uh, in immediate surroundings in all directions and is well connected to the Strathmore line. The fortress would have been able to take advantage of the wider visibility offered by the Strathmore towers while maintaining a highly defensive, defensive position uh, further west. And the Strathmore line forts and fortlets have somewhat limited visibility in the sense that they're able to see various areas of the landscape at quite a distance, but they have poor intervisibility with other uh, military installations. So the Strathmore Towers have much more extensive visibility and are intervisible with a number of the tower sites along the gas bridge. As mentioned earlier, it's thought that the Strathmore Line Towers are an extension of the gas bridge line. And based on visibility, this is quite plausible. Further work needs to be carried out to identify sites in this area, um, especially between Bertha and the southern North Strathmore Tower and perhaps the summer's exceptional weather and crop marks will reveal new information in the area. And the similarity between the viewsheds of the towers and the fortlets on the gas bridge line supports the interpretation that the towers were replaced by the fortlets and could indicate an effort to take advantage of the locations with the best visibility in the area and reduce the number of soldiers that would be needed to, man to occupy the region. Finally, I suggest at the start of my talk that the purpose of the gas bridge might be a frontier, a fortified road, or a general lookout point to monitor land to the south. Based on the viewshed analysis carried out for this project, the answer is likely to be a mix of these suggestions. 
The gas ridge sites have extensive visibility, good intervisibility between the sites along the line, good overlap and coverage of the landscape to both the north and south of the Roman road. All of this together indicates that they were intervisible, um, or sorry, that they were able to monitor the landscape in all directions and were not only looking out from Roman controlled territory or along the line of the road, but had almost complete coverage of the region. Um, going forward, there's some areas that I'd like to keep working on um, related to this study. So the first is to run a probable viewshed analysis for these sites. So it's a really interesting method. It uses uh, Monte Carlo simulation of error to create a variation in the digital elevation model um, based on the root mean square error, error um, in the metadata. And then view sheds are created, um, random view sheds are created, or sorry, uh, yes, yeah, so it makes random view sheds uh, compared to the, this DEM. And they're added to create it together to create an output layer of probability of any site or point in the landscape being visible. So again, you get a, a gradient as your um, output, and the higher the probability of a cell being visible in the landscape, um, there's a higher value on that gradient. Uh, so it can tell you if your sites are intervisible because they are actually intervisible, or if it's because of errors in your, your digital elevation model. So I'd hope to have this completed for this presentation, but due to some te technical difficulties, I was unable to complete the analysis in time. And I'd also like to go out to the sites um, in the future and gain a better understanding of the landscape and how the sites were placed and what the visibility is like from those sites. And this would allow me to then um, adjust the distances used to calculate the fuzzy view sheds so they better reflect reality, with an understanding that visibility has likely changed since the Roman period. Uh, so just take a moment to thank Sean Gilgan and Jennifer Austin, who provided me with various resources and without whom I would not have been able to complete this project. And thank you all for listening. Are there any questions? Mm -hmm.